Hello guys, this is Pavel Oskarov from Laravel Daily Team and YouTube channel Laravel Business and today I want to talk about Laravel form builders. There are some packages that allow you to create the form not in HTML just like input type something but generate the form or parts of the form from Laravel, uh, from controller or from uh, model. Uh, there are a few ways. And not sure if you are familiar with Laravel 4. In Laravel 4, Form Builder was actually a part of the core um, system. And then it was removed into a separate package and kind of abandoned by community, but it's still alive. So I want to show you two Form Builders in this video. And then uh, by showing them, I would explain my thought that you should not use any Form Builder and stick with default Laravel and default HTML. But let's show it. Uh, part by part. So this is a typical form with one field, with just one text field, and in PHP Storm it looks pretty simple. I've prepared the commented out part for the other builders, but by default if you don't use any builder, you just load the view, and inside of the view, in the blade, you will have a lot of HTML stuff with blade commands. So blade CSRF, uh, translations, which is a blade command, errors, which comes from Laravel, uh, old, which comes from Laravel, uh, errors, uh, which comes from default validation, uh, also translations here. So it's HTML with Blade with native Laravel stuff without any packages. Uh, and that works. Uh, now, if we are trying to use one of the builders, the first builder I wanted to show you is that the same one that it was part of Laravel uh, before in the past, uh, before Laravel 5.1, I think. Now it's a Laravel Collective HTML, it's a package, but the syntax remained the same, which is you just do form open, you use facade form uh, with uh, HTML rendering, and you use form open, then form input, form text, form all of that, so form label, and then there's a big documentation of for every field basically you have some kind of syntax. Text, password, file, and all of that. And that was okay. That works okay. Let's show it to you. So this would be the difference. Uh, I've done already composer install Laravel Collective HTML, and this is the view, which looks like this. Uh, so instead of doing uh, to compare, instead of doing form action, uh, you are doing form open. Uh, instead of CSRF, you don't have to do that because that package creates that for you. Uh, then instead of uh, and type multi-part multi form data, you have files true. And that's exactly the first issue with that. Uh, you have to actually remember the syntax of that package. You need to know or look it up in documentation. For example, it's not really obvious because uh, in the documentation you have file input uh, and you do form file image, but in small letters, by the way, they, have, they say that form must be opened with files options set to true. And you have to kind of figure out that that option should be here uh, in the array of options of form open, which is not really... Basically, you have to learn additional stuff uh, just to open the form and just to add the file field. Uh, in our case, there is no file field, uh, but I wanted to show you that as an example. And then, uh, on top of that, you have, to, you have to know the syntax, basically. So you have to know that label has label name and label text, uh, then text field has name, value, and then array of options, which you have to specify like this one as array. Uh, then for submit, you need to know that uh, this is the name of the button and this is the array which you add class. And basically it adds a lot of complexity and learning curve in addition to default Laravel. However, uh, it does make sense to use that for some additional features. If you want those features, then it may uh, win you. Uh, one, one of those I showed you already, so I don't have to specify CSRF. Some parts uh, that package does take care of you uh, out of the box and behind the scenes. So stuff like default values, uh, which are handled by this one. So this is the most powerful feature of that, for model binding. So you have uh, edit form, for example, not the create in my case, but edit, and you do that for model. So instead of doing form open, you do form model and you attach the object of the, of the form, of the user, uh, to the form. And then you don't have to specify values in all the fields. So 
you would do form text, so you wouldn't need to specify the values. The form will automatically be filled for you from with this priority from session data, from the value, or from model attribute data. So this is probably, uh, for a long time, it was the reason why we did use that package inside our team. And even the first version of Quick Admin Panel, our generator did use that uh, just for form model binding because it's pretty uh, convenient. But with time, uh, the additional time to support that uh, package kind of convinced us to, to move away from it. Uh, so judge for yourself, but this package is at least close enough to Laravel community. It was part of the core. And if you have old projects or developers who worked on old Laravel versions, you'll probably meet those syntax. So for those of you who won't use that package, at least you wouldn't be scared of seeing that instead of uh, just HTML. So that's Laravel Collective HTML. On top of that, there's one more form builder, which is Christian Husak from Serbia created the package Laravel Form Builder, which actually utilizes uh, Laravel Collective HTML under the hood. So in Composer JSON, it's one of the dependencies. Uh, you can see it here. So it uses that the same Laravel Collective HTML, but on top of that, it adds another layer to generate the whole form for you. Uh, in uh, GitHub, I will show you. So basically, you build the form, like adding name, adding some uh, some options and then you that that becomes a separate class and then you pass it to the view like this one and I've done just that I've installed the package and I've done as it says in the documentation make form artisan make form I've created a form class with one field name text and the result is this so this builds the form and then in the controller I do this magic this magic. So I also I need to specify form builder. Wait. So I need to use form builder. Then I have to pass form builder here. Form builder. And then I need to create the object with the form as a parameter. And then uh, those parameters also what do I need to post to. Uh, and then I pass it as a variable. And the blade looks magically like this. So there's one line in Blade. Blade doesn't contain any HTML, any form, and all the logic is actually described here. Uh, and, and that's it. So this becomes kind of a settings file, options file for the whole form. Uh, kind of in Laravel, uh, it's an example of JSON resource, for example, to create a JSON, uh, JSON response or a middleware form request is kind of a similar logic. So you separate the logic of form into a separate class, which is okay. Uh, and I've tried to do that. And if we refresh our, this is the documentation for that package. And if we refresh our page, uh, we see this. Now uh, I've tried to use the form and I will show you why exactly it's not convenient, at least for me. So for example, I generate the form with well field text and now I need to specify that it's a required field. Basically add a label to it. Label by default is the same as field name. Now I need to get into the package uh, documentation and find this. So a lot of parameters uh, or like options for, for, for just create a field or label. And I can find that the label can be overridden like this. So options. Options is the third parameter here that I also have to figure out. So options, I can do label and then copy and paste it from uh, here. So this, no, not even that. I need to have trans dot start because it's a required field. Let's refresh and see if it actually worked. Create, yeah, it did work, asterisk. Now I need to add a button because by default it didn't generate a button submit. Right, okay, again, back to the documentation, what is a button? Okay, there's no submit button separately, so buttons, right, okay, add, reset or submit, okay, fine. Uh, we copy and paste this into the class. Add name submit, type submit, now probably this one is irrelevant and label should be uh, trans global save this one. OK. 
okay label copied it here uh, again refresh the page uh, and there is a button but wait where's the styling right I need to add a CSS class here so we do create blade and we find this one now how do I add that class into that form uh, I think okay it's another option probably I'm guessing so class uh, btm btm danger it's a bootstrap class and we refresh and it doesn't work why because according to documentation class is not just a class it's not an option it's an attribute so you have to know that attribute inside of the attribute array inside of that array uh, and then it should probably work I will refresh that yep it worked so see how much work you need to uh, do on top of that just to make a simple create blade uh, create a view basically file and my final argument against those is at any time that package can be abandoned so for example uh, someone doesn't update that HTML to Laravel 6 currently it's Laravel 6 and they're all supporting Laravel 6 which is awesome but when Laravel 7, uh, 7 comes out or Laravel N, 8 and you want to update your Laravel project until that package is updated to support that version you won't be able to update the project so you have a dependency uh, it may be as I said even abandoned and not even updated at all what do you do then create recreate the whole project uh, but that's actually that's actually logic with all the packages any packages uh, but there are packages that are really kind of actively supported and they have trust for example company spati is like really uh, famous in laravel world and i trust them to update all the packages and they do that for like many years but in general uh, you kind of depend on the package and also on top of that you have uh, issues so for example that package is uh, really popular thousand stars awesome but it has 100 issues uh, of course the closed issues amount is also impressive so it is actively maintained but uh, see 100 issues and it kind of makes me not really trust that package with so many issues it should be kind of single digit it's fine because maybe the author isn't uh, really doesn't have much time or isn't getting paid for that that's logical but still it's pretty significant uh, so yeah my whole uh, message of this video is there are form builders uh, but you should probably avoid them unless you have already pa uh, packaged a project with them inside and then that video should probably help you to get around and to understand how they work a little what do you think about those form builders uh, shoot the comment below in YouTube video and let's discuss and subscribe to the channel and see you guys in other videos on Laravel business video channel